Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. Beaton and Coulter just revealed a huge secret about DEM's 2020 presidential candidate. Republican commentator and author Ann Coulter was one of candidate Donald Trump's biggest supporters during the 2016 race. She has backed off considerably since the inauguration this past January because she's not pleased the border wall Trump promised has yet to be built. Give it a minute, Ann. It's coming. Coulter correctly predicted one year in advance that Trump would become the GOP nominee for president. She ain't no dummy. Now, Coulter reveals who she believes will be the Democrat nominee, Trump's challenger, in 2020, Burr Washington Examiner. Conservative commentator and author Ann Coulter says that if Senator Kamala Harris, Democrat California, announces a bid for the Democratic nomination in the 2020 presidential election, she will become the nominee. I say if Kamala Harris runs, she is the Democratic nominee, Coulter said during a speech Thursday evening as quoted by Breitbart News TV editor Jeff Poor. Coulter was the featured guest speaker at the Walton County Republican Executive Committee's annual Lincoln Day Dinner in Miramar Beach, Florida. Yuck! Not Kamala Harris. The woman is so far left she can't see straight. At the same time, yes Kamala Harris. Why? Because Trump will have no problem winning re-election if that is the case. What say you, patriots? Let us know in the comments section. Jerry Falwell Jr. just teamed up with Trump to take down McConnell and McCain with this secret weapon. Falwell has been one of Trump's biggest supporters since he entered the race for POTUS. As an evangelical Christian, he said of Trump that a new hope had entered the White House after Trump won. And he's come up with a great plan to take down both McConnell, McCain and all other Republicans that are, really, part of the resistance. His plan is that Trump begin calling them fake Republicans. Trump loves to label people for what they are. You remember, Crooked Hillary, Little Marco, Lying Dead, and the like. It's super smart, too because it makes people think of them in his terms. And we all know that McConnell and McCain are part of the swamp Trump is draining. They are obstructionists in his own party. In an interview with Hannity on Fox News, Falwell said this, because that's what those people you just named are. They're not really Republicans. We don't really have a majority in the Senate, and I think that would be a good term for him to start using. Ain't that the truth, y'all? If we truly had a majority, then Trump's ideas and the things we voted for him to do would get through pretty easily. But, no, there's obstruction within his own party, fighting against him. Which means they are fighting against the American people who voted him in as POTUS, right? If you agree, share 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 with the comment fake Republicans out. H. T. The Hill Right after Melania's clapback, Ivana Trump came back swinging with something awful. President Trump's first wife Ivana Trump has gone on a bizarre campaign against First Lady Melania Trump this week. On Monday Ivana went on Good Morning America to talk about her friendship with President Trump and promote her new book about raising the first three Trump kids, Ivanka, Eric, and Donald Jr. During her interview Ivana implied that she, not Melania, was the First Lady. I don't really want to call him there because Melania is there and I don't want to cause any kind of jealousy or something like that. Because I'm basically first Trump wife, okay? I'm, the, first lady. Mrs. Trump has made the White House a home for Barron and the President. She loves living in Washington DC and is honored by her role as first lady of the United States. She plans to use her title and role to help children, not sell books. There is clearly no substance to this statement from an ex, this is unfortunately only attention-seeking and self-serving noise. Unwilling to let well enough alone, 
Ivana got on the Wendy Williams show on Friday to diss Melania some more. I tell you, I'm technically first lady Trump. I was first wife. I don't know what is Melania's problem. She just have to get over it. She is first lady of America but I'm first lady Trump, excuse me, and have three grown up kids. When Williams asked her about Melania's initial response, she said. I have no idea why she did it, cause I never said I'm first lady of America. Better her than me, frankly, you know. This woman is clearly an attention seeking nut job. It's too bad Melania has to put up with a jealous ex when she has so many better things to do and think about. Support Melania? Share it out. HTE Online Must watch brand new interview shows fed up Mattis ripping media to shreds. Secretary of Defense Jim Mattis told reporters on Friday that an NBC News report of President Trump proposing a tenfold increase in nuclear weapons was false. It's a shame that the media keeps spinning false stories that our leaders then have to take time out to correct when they should be focusing on far more important issues. Mattis slammed NBC on Friday during a visit to the Pentagon, saying that he at first thought his staff was playing a joke on him. Let me just tell you, I saw that article and at first I thought maybe dot that somebody clipped something out dot it was one of those, it's a way to keep a little bit of lightheartedness and a rather grim job. He continued. There was no discussion with that tone or that content that I recall in the Pentagon or at any other time. I will even remove that I recall. I think I would recall a conversation about doubling our 10 times the nukes, okay. I've never had that discussion. These comments follow up a statement earlier this week in which he also denied the story, saying. Recent reports that the president called for an increase in the U.S. nuclear arsenal are absolutely false. This kind of erroneous reporting is irresponsible. The things that the media just makes up and tells to the public are both heinous and deeply irresponsible. We expect the news to tell us the facts and our leaders depend on journalists to give unbiased reporting to citizens so they can make informed political decisions. Tired of the lies? Share it out. H.T. Washington Examiner New report on media bias proves Trump right and reveals something even more shocking. Pew Research just came out with a report proving President Trump and his supporters were right all along about the media's bias. The study analyzed media coverage of the president during his first 100 days in office, and the findings would be shocking if they were not so unsurprising. The media's evaluations of President Trump were far more negative and less positive than those of his three predecessors. Negative coverage made up to 62% of total media coverage three times higher than media coverage of Obama. And that's not even the worst part. The worst part is, the media wasn't even focusing on President Trump's policies, they were focusing on his personality. See overage of Trump's early days in office moved further away from a focus on the policy agenda, 31% of stories, compared with 50% for Obama. 65% for Bush and 58% for Clinton, and toward character and leadership. The research continued. Only about 1 in 10 stories, 11%, delivered an overall positive assessment of the administration's words or actions. Four times as many, 44%, offered a negative assessment, while the remaining 45% were neither positive nor negative. You know? It wouldn't even be so bad if they were just negative about his policies. If they provided structured and original arguments against President Trump's policies, at least it would foster a dialogue and give room for debate. That they were hammering his character though shows a blatant bias and total lack of journalistic integrity that is more focused on ratings and sensationalism than actual news. Share this out so everyone can see how dishonest the mainstream media actually is. HTP
backfired when Hillary calls Trump a sexual assaulter, the interviewer asked the one question she feared most. After five long days, Hillary Clinton finally spoke out against Hollywood pervert Harvey Weinstein. But in true Hillary fashion, she still found a way to politicize the issue. In an interview with the BBC, Hillary made a pathetic attempt to compare Harvey Weinstein to President Trump and boy did it backfire. During an interview with Andrew Marr, Clinton straight out lied and referred to Trump as an admitted sexual assaulter. This kind of behavior cannot be tolerated anywhere, whether it's in entertainment, politics, Clinton said. After all, we have someone admitting to being a sexual assaulter in the Oval Office. Unlike journalists in America's mainstream media, Andrew Marr actually had the courage to call her out on her hypocrisy. Marr pointed out that Hillary Clinton totally dismissed the women who accused her husband of rape. Was that the right thing to do? Marr asked. That's when Hillary showed her true disgusting character and brushed those women off as being in the past, 